Uh, good morning, Uncle Lou. Yeah. Uh, that's right. Uh, it's me, Uncle Lou, live on LouTube. Uh, for all you people. Uh, that's why they play the game. Uh, you hear that saying all the time. Games aren't played on paper, played on the field. Uh, they're also coached on the field, too. Uh, or at least they're supposed to be. But, uh, look, I know a lot of people aren't going to like what I have to say here, and that's fine. Um, this is Uncle Lou's opinion. Uh, no one has to share this opinion. Uh, matters not to me. Uh, so, uh, yep. Yeah. Now, when we lost to South Carolina, I got on here. I said the better team won. Uh, period. Um, when we lost to Florida, I got right on here. I said Florida was the better team. They whooped us. Uh, yesterday against Georgia Tech, uh, the better team did not win that game. Period. Um, unless you watch the whole game, uh, then I don't really care uh, what you think. But, you know, Every time Georgia loses, of course, you're going to have people come out with the fire Mark Rick and the fire Mark Bobo. That always happens. Happens everywhere, just about. You know, anytime a team loses, some part of that team's fan base is going to come out and want the head coach or the offensive coordinator or the defensive coordinator or somebody to be fired. I've never really fell into that category before. Um, last night during the Auburn-Alabama game, I was watching the SEC broadcast. They had Paul Feinbaum taking calls live on the air. And at halftime, there were people calling in saying, bench Blake Sims, fire Kirby Smart. I mean, you name it. Um, so that kind of thing happens all the time. I've never really fallen into that category. But the game yesterday, plain and simple, uh, the UGA coaches lost that game, not the players, period. Um, I've thought about it for almost 24 hours now, and there's just no other reasonable conclusion. Um, after the South, when we lost the South Carolina game, we had it first and goal, and we didn't run the ball, which was a mistake. <clears throat> the coaches came out after the game, but uh, offensive coordinator Mike Bobo, head coach Mark Rick, both came out after the game and said, "Yeah, uh, you know, hindsight 2020. If we could do it over again, we'd run the ball. Blah blah blah." Well, fast forward a couple of months here to the Georgia Tech game. First and goal from the half-yard line, and you don't get a touchdown. Um, you try to throw the ball. You try some kind of a toss sweep. Just look. Teams in the NFL, Peyton Manning hands the ball off first and goal from the half-yard line. Uh, Tom Brady. I mean, you can quarterback snake it. You put Quavon Hicks, the fullback, in there with Nick Chubb behind him, and you run it up the middle four times, and you score a touchdown, period. Uh, running the ball is what got us to 9-2 and two going into this game, and I don't understand first and goal on the half-yard line not just running it up the middle four times. That's coaching, plain and simple. It was bad play calling. Uh, it was a mistake. It was aggravating. It was frustrating. I know I wasn't the only UGA fan saying, I, I know they're not going to make the same mistake they made in the Carolina game, and then they went and made the same mistake they made in the Carolina game. Um, just ridiculous. Um, yeah, UGA had two fumbles inside the five-yard line in the first half. Um, those things happen. Um, Nick Chubb and Sony Michelle have done an excellent job all year of, hang of hanging on to the football. Uh, no running back never fumbles. It's going to happen. just so happens that in this game it happened twice. Uh, at the most inopportune time possible. Um, but, of course, we got one of those back from Georgia Tech in the second half um, when Damian Swan ripped the ripped the ball out of Justin Thomas's hand and ran it back 99 yards for a touchdown. I, I agree that was a controversial call. Um, you know, unfortunately, the referee didn't blow the whistle. Had he blown the whistle, the play would have been dead. I will say this, though. If the referee would have blown the whistle and Justin Thomas would have kept the ball and lunged forward 
and scored right after the referee blew the whistle, I'm pretty sure the Georgia Tech fans would be on here saying the referee shouldn't have blew the whistle. It's just one of those things that happens. Yeah, it was a fluke play. I'll be the first to admit it. Very little talent or any or skill or whatever involved in that play. It was a complete fluke. Um, but, you know, unfortunately they can't review when the referee blew the whistle. They did review the play to see if Justin Thomas had crossed the goal line, but there was just no way to tell. There was just so many people piled up there. I don't know if, I don't know if he reached the ball over or not. He might have. Um, but anyway, so yeah. So UGA players blew a couple of opportunities in the first half. Uh, Georgia Tech players blew uh, an opportunity or two in the second half. Um, but the play calling down at the goal line, just ridiculous. Uh, and then, of course, the decision to squib kick it. I mean, I don't understand. I mean, high school coaches know you don't squib kick the ball when you're up by a field goal. Uh, that's something you can think about trying when you're up by four points or more. But when the team can tie with a field goal and you're basically giving them field position at the 40, 45 yard line, it's just terrible coaching, period. Uh, there's no there's no excuse to be made for that. Uh, I don't care what the coaches say they were thinking. It was wrong. Uh, they screwed up. Uh, and they cost UJ this game, period. Now, that's the bottom line. Uh, so, congratulations uh, to Cormac uh, on a win over the dogs this year. Uh, you have bragging rights for the next 364 days, sir. Um, nothing I can say about that. Nothing, you know, no. In the end, it doesn't matter why UGA lost or why Georgia Tech won. That's not what's important. What's important is that Georgia Tech won the game. Uh, they get a win in the win column. They're ten and two, Georgia nine and three. Um, but I do not think the better team won the game. I, I do not think Georgia's better. Uh, Georgia Tech was better than Georgia yesterday. I think the coaches handicapped us, uh, and it's just it's ridiculous. It is getting tiresome. It, it is getting old. Me constantly having to make excuses for Coach Richt, uh, and 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 the play calling of Bobo in key situations. Uh, I still don't think either of those guys should be fired. That's not what I'm saying. Uh, you know, it, it, it's possible to it's possible to blame the coach for a loss without thinking the coach should be fired. I mean, use common sense, people. I mean, has Peyton Manning ever ever lost a game for his team? Of course he has. Uh, should the team have benched him because he lost one game? No, it's just ridiculous. Um, has Nick Saban ever lost a game? Yes. Should he be fired? No. Uh, I don't think Coach Rick and Coach Bobo should be fired, um, but plain and simple, they blew it yesterday. They they straight up blew it. Uh, piss poor coaching in key situations during the game, uh, and you just can't overcome that. So, uh, congratulations Georgia Tech. Congratulations Cormac. Uh, I I sent you my email address Cormac on or commented my email address on some other video. Uh, if you didn't see it. Let me know, and I'll leave it in the comments on this video too. But um, just send me the address, uh, email me your address, and uh, how you want me to sign that newspaper, uh, and I'll get that out to you uh, this week. Uh, so, yep. Yeah, I mean, I I made a video after the Arkansas Missouri game on Friday and said I really didn't care about the Georgia Georgia Tech game anymore. Just true. I I don't really don't care that we lost. Doesn't matter. Uh, we had nothing to gain by winning or losing that game. Uh, without playing in the SEC championship game, we had no no chance of making the playoffs. So, you know, whatever bowl they stick us in against some mediocre Big Ten team, you know, it is what it is. So be it. Uh, I will say this, uh, and, and really, I shouldn't even have to defend this, really, because I've said on multiple occasions that Georgia Tech's not even a rivalry to me. I, I don't even really hate Georgia Tech. Uh, you know, I made a hate week video because Cormac's on here, and, He's a fun guy to go back and forth with on here, but I really don't hate Georgia Tech. I don't consider them a rival. Uh, I mean, we've we've beat them now still 12 out of the last 14 years. They're not in the SEC. They're, you know, several steps below us, uh, you know, uh, as far as the level of their program goes. So I don't really consider them a rival to begin with. So it won't be too hard for me to go ahead and, and, uh, and pull for Georgia Tech next week to beat Florida State. Well, that's how I feel on one hand. On the other hand, I kind of do want Florida State to make the playoffs so they can get humiliated in the first round. I've been saying this for 
two months now, but if Florida State makes the playoff, they'll lose by three scores in the first round. I don't care who they play. Alabama, Oregon, Ohio State, TCU, Baylor, you name it. doesn't matter. Whoever Florida State plays, if they make it to the playoffs, they'll get beat by three scores in the first round. They're just terrible. They're not any good. Uh, I'm not the only one that feels that way. Uh, the playoff committee won't even rank them number one. They're undefeated and the defending national champions. And if, if we were still in the BCS era, they wouldn't even be in the championship game. That's just pathetic and sad. Uh, and, you know, th the reason for that is simple. The playoff committee is punishing you, FSU, uh, because your administration won't punish you. So the playoff committee is doing it for them. Uh, the way you're handling your program down there is a disgrace and an absolute joke. You ought to be embarrassed and ashamed of yourselves. You're everything that's wrong with college football, period. Uh, you know, and and they want to, oh, all the FSU haters. Uh, well, I, I'll get in the front of that line. I, I don't mind being called an FSU hater. I do hate them. What they're doing down there is just wrong. It's despicable. They ought to be embarrassed and ashamed of themselves. Uh, and, and it'll catch up to them at, in one way or another at some point. So, uh, but anyway, uh, once again, congratulations to Georgia Tech. Uh, the better team lost, but Georgia Tech won the game in the score column. Uh, so you can hang that over my head for the next 364 days. But to be honest with you, I really could care less. Uh, I rather would have beat Carolina this year than beat Georgia Tech. So if anybody wants to rag on me, Carolina fans, that's what would really get to me. Georgia Tech, uh, I really don't care about you. You're nothing to me. Uh, you're uh, you're really just irrelevant. So, but congratulations on the win. Uh, yep.